The following podcast is scheduled for one fall. From the heart of Broadway in historic downtown Cape Girardeau, this is Pro Wrestling Unscripted. It's February 27, 2019, and you are tuned into Pro Wrestling Unscripted. Here in the Podzilla 1985 Network, I want to thank you guys for tuning in once again this week. My name is Shannon Young. I'm going to be your host tonight along with the three-fourths of the usual crew, if you count me included. The numbers don't lie. And they spell disaster for this man, the five-star man, Ace of Grey, down at the end of the table. Bring it. Bitch. Ooh, Bring it, you, bitch. Said, you said a bad what word? You say it, no, I'm say not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. It's a family show. Ali A. Bear to my right. Hello. And to my left, the ghost of the big D. Yo. Right. Who, if I'm reading the 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 group <laughs> the group chat correctly, isn't even staying for the show. What? He Wait, got what? A, he got a picture with Dolph Ziggler, and apparently Jason is sick, so they're coming back already. So should we just wait? Like fuck no. Let's just let's just do the show until he gets here. No. It'll be the longest episode we've ever done. Yeah, you've never done. I'm going home. <laughs> we'll have to top the. Uh, what has the record right now? Isn't it the Justin Smart show? Uh, it might be. Or did, was Brandon came on after it and like delayed us longer? So that's how deep the rivalry between Justin and Brandon went. Is they even uh, fought over who could keep us here the longest? <laughs> and I'm pretty sure Brandon won. God bless his soul. Uh, let's talk about some wrestling. And if we're gonna talk about wrestling, you got to talk about the big story of the week. And I'm wondering where we're gonna go with this. Uh, because I didn't know if you wanted to touch on the very stupid, the very stupid misinformation that people have about this, or if we just want to celebrate the fact Roman Reigns was on Raw. Yes, he gave an update on his situation, and the update is the best update that he could have given, and that is that Roman Reigns, his cancer, his leukemia, is in remission. Yes, and he is now back on Monday Night so Raw. So that's that was the only thing that I was a little bit confused by, because I don't is he back full time now, or is he? Is he like? I don't. I don't. I don't know if he's back full time or if he's still like in recovery. Because if this was like a one-off can, thing. Yeah, if this was just his one-off appearance, which he got way more physical than I was expecting him to. Yeah. Um. But he did. Like, cause he got he got physical in that segment where he him and Seth saved Dean Ambrose, who's now just back to officially being a face. Um. Which I I thought it was an effective segment at least. I mean, it really was. Yeah. Um. And like his speech was great. Um, the the reaction that he got when he announced that he was in remission was it was what he deserved. The, the reaction he got, genu- it felt genuine. And at the end of the night, or when he did the Superman punches, mm-hmm. he got cheered. And like, it's not new that Roman Reigns got cheered, but it felt like everybody was cheering him. Yeah, there, there wasn't any spattering of booze. All right, let's. let's Which address- good because that's the because that's you know that is not the time for <laughs> for petty internet bullshit right. trolling. Uh, let's address the elephant in the room. We have to talk about it. Um. There is a there is a minority, I would say, mm-hmm. vocal minority of idiots. Vocal minority of idiots who believes that Roman Reigns that this was all a work. Now, I want to lay out why they think it's a work and then explain why that's I don't mm-hmm. think that's true. Um he he disappeared off TV for a couple of months. The months he was gone, he did film a movie. Mm-hmm. And when he came back, he was more popular than ever. He looks the same. He doesn't look like he lost a step. Which is which he does not look the same. I didn't get to see enough of him he, to, to to really comment on it. He has clearly lost a significant amount of weight. But is especially it, in his arms, his shoulders, and his face. It so he's saying he very, lost like muscle definition too. Yeah. Okay. Like he he has he does not look the same. And if you're and if you are saying he look he still looks good. Yeah. But he does not look the same. And if you're arguing that point, you're clearly empirically wrong. I'm not. Just for the record. Fans at home can't see the, you I'm, looking at me I'm like I'm talking that. to the internet idiots. Uh, but but here and here's why I think they think that is because one, I mean, I'm a conspiracy theorist too. Right. But they they think that Roman left. He has this feel good story. He comes back. Now he's getting cheered, mm-hmm. which by the way won't last. It will go back to the way it was. So been, well, if their if their treatment of Roman goes back to the way it was, it will. Yeah. Like he this will this will have bought him some goodwill. Yeah. But it won't. But it's not forever. No. It all depends on how they portray mm-hmm. him at this point but they, they think that because he was gone because he's not bald because he hasn't lost like he didn't he, because he's not frail and skinny right he's not coming out looking like a typical patient yeah he's not in a wheelchair stuff like that they think that and even this was all a giant Stere- work stereotypical yes like yes, when yes. you when you go to a movie and it's about someone who's going through cancer it's the 
yeah, total, all, lost all of their hair, yeah. mm-hmm. can't move, very weak, which does happen to people. Like, absolutely. Um, but, but there are a lot of different treatments. Yes, and a lot of different types of cancer and leukemia. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a leukemia, I forget the name of it, but they actually put out a series of tweets explaining and it's like it's like a legit leukemia center or, or something like that. They put out a lot of a uh, couple of tweets explaining why Roman. They put out a full on thread. Yeah, and it was fantastic. It was glorious. I, can, I can pull it up here real they, quick. They cause... were super cool about it. They used wrestling gifts. I mean, it mm-hmm. was it was as cool as it could possibly be to explain that just because Roman doesn't look like the stereotypical cancer patient does not mean that it was it, faked. The the account uh, was Leukemia Care UK, um, which is a. Um, the, it's a support center based out of the United Kingdom. Right. Um, firstly, incredible news about Roman Reigns. Relapse is a scary reality for all leukemia patients, either fear of your cancer returning or having to face treatment for relapse. It's great to hear some positive news from a leuke- leukemia patient. The tweets we are seeing mainly center around the idea of what a cancer patient should look like. How can he have hair? How can he have not lost weight? Why does he look like? A, why doesn't he look like a cancer patient? Uh uh, leukemia is a cancer. It affects people of all ages. There are four main types of cancer, uh, which they break that down. Um, and there are other subtypes within all of those other types. Uh, the different types are key. Acute leukemias are aggressive and need aggressive treatment to save a patient. Chronic leukemias are incurable but treatable. Don't forget, we do not know what type of leukemia he had. Therefore, none of us are in a position to question his treatment, how he should look, etc., um, how can he have hair? Treatment for leukemia may cause hair loss. It may cause hair thinning. It may cause no hair loss at all. Um, leukemia can make you lose weight. Leukemia can also make you gain weight. There is no way, no one way that leukemia should look. A uh, key example of this is uh, WWE fan and patient advocate Chris the Script, who has lived with chronic leukemia for the past decade. Uh, does he look like a leukemia patient to you? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Final few thoughts. Uh... They give a shout out they, to Dave Meltzer, which is funny. Well, they well they, that comes up here in a second. Um, but they mentioned that like going through this has a profound psychological impact on a person. So the fear of relap- relapse is always there. Think before you tweet. Which imagine telling someone who reco- was recovering from cancer you fake that this. I don't believe you actually had it. Yeah. Right? What scum are you? Um, but they Lisa. also say that they're open to answer any any questions that anyone has. Uh, remember, not everything in life everything in life isn't a work. Yeah, which was funny. Um, and then they do reach out to Meltzer. Uh, that they were just hoping that he would pick up that thread to raise awareness because they were aware that a lot of people were addressing these questions to him. Yeah, and and like I said, look, I'm a conspiracy theorist, you know, and I I get that the internet. For the most part, the internet and people on the internet know more than specialists and doctors. Like I'm aware of that, but in in a case like this, I've seen House. You've seen House, and yeah. so these well, these guys haven't seen it, right? But they've read well, about Scrubs. It. There they was know. that episode of Scrubs. Yeah, they saw and they watched ER back in the day. We all did. Um, <laughs> but here's here's why it's not true. Here, here why it's not true that he faked it. Right. Even even if. Even if I wanted to believe that he faked it for for ratings and stuff like that, like there is no way in hell that Vince McMahon and, and Hunter said this in the group chat, and he was right on, and I know I know everybody agreed with him. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure there was no way Vince McMahon, as scummy as he is, as scummy as he could be, and I think we, you mentioned it too. We all mentioned it, except me. I watched. Uh, as scummy as he is, there's no way that he would fake cancer for like it's not a storyline, right? Like this was very much a real thing. He, he didn't say Roman Reigns has cancer. Roman Reigns came out, used his real name, said mm-hmm. he was stepping away. Uh, if it was ever found out that Vince McMahon and the WWE scripted this cancer storyline and portrayed it as real, they would be crucified. You remember that picture of all of the the different knights putting their swords down against PETA? Right. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing against WWE. Because yeah. remember how they got crucified by Glad when they faked the gay storyline? Right. Imagine that now with cancer. See, but that would, but it's an extra layer because I think Connor might have mentioned it too. But uh, the 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 fact that like Connor's cure. They work so closely with Make a Wish and with Susan G. Komen and like so many great stories and partnerships that they have formed. Yeah, based around cancer. That yeah, there is no way that they would risk that public black eye, and it would have to be a thing where, because like one of the things is you know well clearly you know they can't keep like the reports that Batista was backstage on Raw leaked out Monday mm. evening. Um, like 
the WWE is too big to keep a secret like that. Even if it was strictly just Roman and Vince who concocted it, who con- kept who, it between themselves. Who, and they were the only two people that knew about it. Yeah. Uh, even then, like Roman has family. Right. Roman would have then, that implies that he would have lied to his entire family about a cancer scare. Right. Like, including his children. Now, with that said, with that said, and I don't think it's going to happen, but with that said, if at any point in the next couple of weeks when Roman's back, they use this in storyline where someone says, I can prove you didn't they have would, cancer. Oh, oh, they use that specifically. Yeah. I was going to say, well, of course they're going to use his cancer because it's you know, the WWE. Line where like someone has proof that Roman faked it and they use this as a storyline. Even if it turns out that like he's wrong and in the end it, you know, Roman triumphs and all that. Like I like to believe there is a level that you don't there's a line you don't cross in entertainment. But it's not like people have people have used cancer and storylines and sickness forever. Mm-hmm. We and we go back to it like what's so different about sports entertainment versus movies? Why can movies use it versus you know wrestling? And we all agree that wrestling's not prepared to handle mm-hmm. a storyline like that with grace or dignity. But it doesn't mean that they're not allowed to try. They're an entertainment company, of course they can try. But in in the public eye, in the position that they are in, they are not going to be treated the same mm-hmm. as a television show like well, Young of the Restless or something like that. They're they're gonna get demonized and they're gonna lose profits and they're gonna lose shareholders and they would never risk that. And like you said, um, this wasn't Roman Reigns had cancer, right? This was Joe Inouye, right? Uh, I know I didn't say that right. Um, I didn't even like, try earlier, <laughs> but it was but it, but it was Joe, but like Joe came out and said that. Yeah. It, that then the difference is, you know, when you're watching, you know. It wasn't like like during Philadelphia. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks didn't. didn't have they didn't say, "Hey, by the way, I have AIDS." Yeah, or AIDS. No, yeah, he he portrayed a character right. who was going through that. And like I said, and wrestling is just you can't compare wrestling to traditional media because there's that blurred line of who is the character, who is the performer. Unless this is that, legitimately a an example of them trying to blur that line. Which I don't they think they would. They, yeah, but they wouldn't do that because again, this plays into the whole real world again of. His children had to hear his cancer is back. Right. Leukemia is back. Um, and it's one of those things where, I like, again, he, you can, if you go back and, like, look at that video, he looks smaller. Like, again, still looks good. Also, when the, the criticism of, well, he went and filmed a movie. He was on set for, like, three days. He wasn't, he's not the star no. of the new movie. It, it was, from what I understand, it was The Rock got him that part in his downtime. Yeah. To like help one help him not go stir crazy, two give him some work. Mm-hmm. Like that should be something that is celebrated. Of oh, that is a kind gesture, right? Not mm-hmm. a not a bullet for no, a gun and not, a conspiracy theory. Yeah, uh, Allie, if you had to send a message to all of the people out there who are pushing this uh, fake news agenda of Roman Reigns didn't have cancer, if there was a term that you had to use, if you were to say something like bleep you to those people. What would that term be? Why are you so like, intent? Why are you doing this? Why are you so intent on losing us money? You could have said screw you. Say screw you. Screw you. I'll take it. We did okay. it. Okay. <laughs> uh, but in the meantime, congratulations to Roman Reigns. We are legitimately happy that he's back. Yeah, it's, that's amazing news. It's, it's, it, this legitimately feels like it's the best case scenario. Because there was a very real part of me that was afraid that it would be be the worst case scenario and that he would pass yeah and i wasn't ready for that but yeah. you're never ready you're never ready no to yeah that would have been that that would have been just that, that would have been real I, I my brain keeps wanting to say interesting but that's the worst word to use i mean it would be interesting it would be like fascinating to see to see it happen but like again just from that of wow this is the first time that something like this has happened because as tragic as it is like wrestler deaths which there have been a lot of tend to be very sudden and for it to be a thing where if he had progressed like poorly and it had not been a quick thing right like seeing like a how death. that would have like seeing how that would have been handled would have been seeing how WWE would have handled that would have been kind of unprecedented right um but thank god you know that isn't the case yeah. and that it is you know this was cuz likely cuz one of the things you have to take in mind is like the the wellness policy isn't just to catch Drug use and steroid right. abuse. It's a wellness it is, policy. It is a wellness policy yeah. to make sure, like, it saved MVP's life. Yeah. Because it found that uh, that heart condition that he had. Um, it's to say, like, it very well could be responsible for catching the the returning cancer early. Right. And if, it, I mean, if you catch it in the early stages, uh, there's so many, like, advanced treatments and things. 
And Roman is very fortunate to be in a position that, you know, he can afford the best of the best of the of the care right. that that he needs and that a lot of people need. Um, that he, you know, he's in a, a re- if they caught it early and he can afford these, you know, great new treatments that, yeah, it was, you know, back in October, October, I think yeah. is what is when he uh, it was announced. So, yeah. cause we expected him to be gone for I assu- a year. I, I genuinely assumed it would be years. Yeah. Like I did not think it would be this soon. And mm-hmm. again, I, maybe I'm missing like the official announcement where they said that, but like, I didn't think he was. Well, he, I wasn't. He did un- say I'm back. He said he was back, but yeah. like the but Rock so said the, he was back. Yeah, I was about to say that. Um, <laughs> the Undertaker said this is his show. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, and it may just be like, and he may be used kind of like um, on air, just not necessarily in ring, very right. physical until he's but back all- to back to where he he wants to be and back to a hundred percent because remission doesn't mean this is all over. Yeah, it just it, it, just, it didn't just that, go away. Yeah, it, he didn't yeah. wake up one day and all of a sudden he didn't have cancer. Yeah, um, I you were gonna say something. It. It's also like while other people just saw him as he was, you saw that he had lost weight. Mm-hmm. He looked thinner. Um, whatever treatment he went through was probably straining on his body. And so while he wants to get back as quickly as he can, he's going to have to work back into the WWE schedule. Yeah. So, oh yeah, because the the travel schedule alone yeah. is right. you know tor- torture. Yeah, um, but I think it's something. This is something we should be celebrating. Worst case scenario, because like and, you can even see, like look at it, like looking at his arms. Yeah, like yeah. you can. He does look good. You're right. But, no, yeah, I mean, he looks good, but he but he has definitely lost size, which yeah. again is not not shocking. And then some conspiracy theorists will probably say we probably got drop weight for the movie or something like that, and it's like. When you're a conspiracy if you're, theorist, if you're stretching that hard, well, I was gonna say when you're a conspiracy theorist, you will force the pieces together to fit your narrative. Yeah. Trust me, as a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> but at least I keep my conspiracy theories to aliens and mm-hmm. ghosts. So, <laughs> uh, if if it is true that Roman faked this or that this is just some giant conspiracy, then you absolutely have the right to never support WWE again, and I truly mean that. Yeah, and I like, will choose to never support him again. Yeah. But I honestly don't think that's the case. Yeah, and honestly, like I kind of I would prefer. If this was the last we even gave any of that credence, because I'm, it is I'm, just it's just that ridiculous. It's the last time I'm going to give it credence. Yeah, you know, I just wanted to say our piece, and because yeah. we do have some listeners that will listen to us and may be on the fence, because maybe they're so jaded. Because I, I there are some people I can't blame you if you're jaded. You think the worst about everybody, but uh, in this particular case, I really don't think it is. Mm-hmm. I, I think this is just let's celebrate the fact that this man. We finally had some good news coming out of health for once, and not another tragedy. So with that. Welcome back, Roman. Hope it goes well for you. Let's move on to our next story, which probably would have been the top story this week had Roman Reigns not come back with this great news. Mm-hmm. And this is bad news for a couple of wrestlers. One surprised me quite a bit. Uh, Ty Dillinger, Hideo Itami, Arn Anderson, which is I'm really sad about, mm-hmm. especially with the Ar- with the Ric Flair thing on Monday, knowing Arn wasn't going to be out there, even though mm-hmm. Ric Flair is his best friend. And you know, well, well, except for what happened. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I mean, just apparently that is not necessarily a. Are they thing? not best friends anymore? Uh, apparently something happened that I again. It's it's gossip and backstage drama, but apparently there was a falling out between the two. I had no idea. Yeah. Oh, uh, the one that surprised me was TJP, mm-hmm. which that surprised me too. Two, yeah. So two of those, and I'm going to grab our power cable real quick while you talk about. Okay, this. so um, Hide- we talked a few weeks ago about Hideo Itami asking for his release, um, and then last week we talked about Ty Dillinger making his statement. That he wanted, he had also asked for his release. Those releases were granted, uh, and they happened on the same day. Arn Anderson and TJP were both instances of apparently they were both fired. This, these, these were not um, re- requests that were granted. This, these were um, punishments. Uh, Arn Anderson apparently there was an incident at a live event that he and Vince McMahon got into a pretty heated argument. Oh, wow. Um, they, they got into, uh, which apparently they had been kind of not on. And again, this is all just kind of like speculation. And I don't even know if it was Meltzer that's been reporting it or not. Um, they were not on the best of terms to begin with, but they were able to put their differences aside in the sake of what was best for the program. Whereas, and then something happened at this live event or at a taping or whatever, um, wherever it happened. And Arn Anderson was sent home and then ultimately <laughs> released, uh, and it was kind of the same. And then TJP 
was apparently it was a punishment. There's no real details on why it happened mm-hmm. or any specific event that has come to light as far as I know. Yeah, I just um, saw but his yeah, thank but you he, message and that was it. But he was not um he that that was not someone who requested his release. He was also just terminated. Which I mean, it could be a situation where he wasn't fired for a punishment. Maybe they were that the head I haven't heard punishment thing but I also haven't read too much into it. So if you've read the, more into I've it, se- I have seen it listed as like I've seen. I think it, it might again. It might have been Meltzer because everything comes from Meltzer. Um, that it was it was actual like this was done in response as you were you were not someone we want in the company hmm. going forward. So uh, that also, is now they were talking about having a shield match at Fastlane. Oh really? Like a, a six man tag. Which again, like you can have that, and you know you can let Roman you know get the get the heat in that. Right. And just kind of like he he gets the hot tag in Superman punch Superman punch Superman punch spear, and that's the win. But then let Seth and Dean do the quote unquote heavy lifting yeah. in the match. Which and if he's back full time, that's great. It'll be really it, it, this will be interesting to see how they mm-hmm. treat him going forward, how they use him, and how the crowd reacts. Because it very well could be a all right. Yeah, you're back and you survived and we're happy for you. But you're still if you're the tre- if you're tre- if you just go back to that same, he's the underdog character. Then it's, the it's under not big gonna, dog. Yeah, it's not going to work. I was already sick of hearing big dog on big, Raw. Big big dog. dog. Every time they would say, "Welcome back, big dog." <laughs> it's the big dog. I hate <laughs> that nickname so much. Uh boss I, time. I mean, I, uh, what is Nia Jax's? <laughs> The, uh, the, unstoppable- the useless... No, what? Jesus. Wow. I don't like Nia Jax. She hurts we too know. many. <laughs> we know internet. I am, I am sad about TJP, though, because I I originally was not a fan of TJP. Mm-hmm. Because he... I don't know. He just didn't connect with me. He beat Kota Ibushi. I don't want to talk about that. I wasn't even going to bring that one up. That's why. But the moment he, he had his new entrance, I was hooked. Cause that, yeah, the, the music. That yeah. was so cool. The, music, those, the, the video game intro was the coolest. That may be the coolest wrestling intro I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I think someone on Reddit was talking about how it's like, yeah, we need to uh, uh, just put that. If the if the New Day were to break up. Do you put, give Cody? Yeah, put, put that to uh, to Xavier Woods. Xavier. Why did I say Cody? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I don't Holy know. It's like Cody. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time that they've repackaged wrestlers with the same music. Allie, mm-hmm. give me three examples of when a wrestler is being repackaged with someone else's music. Um, can I call Dalton? Why? I can think of one. Did you ever want to call Dalton? I know there's multiple. Like, there's <laughs> yes, a bunch. Uh, the three I'm thinking of, I'll see if yours is one of them. Um, there was... Didn't they give Tori Wilson's music to someone? Actually, you're right, but I don't remember who it is. Was it Tori? I think it was Not Tori, Tori Wilson. Because Wilson. wasn't... I thought the Bella's music was someone... That one I'm not sure of. The ones I was thinking of was uh, The Patriot... His music went to Kurt Angle. Mm-hmm. Um, the cat, Ernest Miller, his music went to Brodus Clay. Yep. And I now can't think of the third one that I uh, had just thought of. Someone pointed out, like, they, it was just a comment on Reddit that I didn't know. Oh, Kane's music went to CM Punk? No. That was the rumor I'd always heard. No. That the fire burns was, spe- was specifically written for Kane. Randy Orton. Shit, that's... What, yeah, because he used it at a show Rand- once. Randy yeah. Orton used it once. Um, right. uh, someone someone mentioned that apparently Drake Maverick's music uh, was Xavier Woods's old music. I can't even and remember his old music. It's before. not good. Ah. I don't remember how it goes, but like it's not. It, it doesn't fit either of them. I don't think. <laughs> um, I think they gave Mr. America of uh, Hulk Hogan, Mr. America, or Mr. America got Hogan's music for some reason. I'm not sure why about that one. That was a weird. There one. has to be like a list of wrestlers who got other wrestlers' music. Yeah, I'm gonna look that up real quick. I feel like that's sad too. If you are a wrestler and they're like, "Hey, what, cu- what culture dot com top ten iconic wrestling things you never knew were recycled?" I'm curious. Hit me let's, with that list. Let's see where we go. I'll click on it so you don't have to. Um, Thanks, nostalgia critic. Uh, Maria's music legs was Stacy Keebler. That's the one I think you were thinking of. Yep, that's the one that I. Uh, that is the one that I was thinking of for sure. Um, Oh, this is a BS list. It has Cesaro's music sampled Dean Malenko's original theme, but they're counting that. Um, <laughs> well, buy rap music. That's all rap music is. Uh, let's see. 
keep going because I'm these are I'm reading through some of these and it's who did they who not, did they give the American males theme to after they broke up? The devil? The, <laughs> the answer is no one, and that's the greatest injustice. I was gonna say, was there someone else that they could? If Adam Russo uh, is listening, I will pay you ten dollars to play instead of Glacier's theme at the next show. No the American males. Theme. No. <laughs> Imagine right. Glacier comes out. So now we're hitting the ones we've talked about with uh, uh, American males. American males. If you see them coming, better run for cover. Uh, I'm going to move on. <laughs> apparently. And yet I'm interested and I want to know. Apparently Ricky Steamboat, uh, his Dragon? theme was Ultimo Dragons theme or vice versa uh, that sounds right because i specifically remember that dragon roar at the beginning of both songs randy savage uh and gorgeous george i'm just gonna name yeah it's going uh on. steve austin and razor ramon okay all right hold on now i call shenanigans on that one because it's not the same thing it's another one of those it just sounds it's, so similar it sampled it yeah probably because think um, about it you got razor ramon the well never mind that could be stone colds too Nobody knows. Also, apparently, Real American was originally um, the U.S. Express's theme. Uh, I think I'd heard that, and they gave it to Hogan instead. Yep. Which, thank Mike, God. Mike Rotundo and Barry Windham. So, imagine Hulk Hogan without Real American in the 80s. It just wouldn't have worked. Even when he went to WCW and they switched it to American Made, mm -hmm. which was a good song, it's not Rick Derringer. It's not, it's not Real American. That song is probably... I feel like... It's like it, Hendrix in the NWO. Yeah. Like, it's, it's so iconic and it's so like really any of the think of your favorite at wrestler or group from the 90s and then think of like try to imagine them without, without that the iconic well i bet the american males would like you to do that <laughs> and then also honestly i think the american males are just happy that someone remembers them <laughs> all right let's not mention buff bagwell or scotty riggs too much because they'll be three shows from now at ccw they'll be there <laughs> there are spies everywhere um AEW, this is very cool. Asa told me about this uh, before the show. Told me and Ali about this, and uh, I want him to elaborate for you guys. AEW, that is All Elite Wrestling, the best t-shirt company, is working with <laughs> – I like the joke. Working with Culture City to make Double or Nothing, which is their next pay-per-view, and I think that is in – Vegas. Vegas in what month? May. May. I think. I, I don't, I'll look that up. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but they're going to make Double or Nothing sensory inclusive. Tell us about this, Asa. Um, so Culture City is a – uh, organization that works with um, people who are on the autism spectrum and who suffer from PTSD or extreme anxiety, or even um, they mentioned stroke victims in the video. Um, this annou this announcement was actually made on this. So they have a series, the road to double or nothing on YouTube that they put out, which is a lot of um, behind the scenes things of what the, of putting the show together. Mm -hmm. It's actually really, really interesting. Um, Let's see what the I'm trying to talk and do the date as well. Um, but the uh, Culture City they work with and they are working with AEW to provide. If you request it, I don't know what the what the steps are to like you. You'll have to go through to to receive this. But apparently they will be supplying um, noise canceling earphones for people who can't handle um, wow, loud noises, noise. especially like sudden noises with like pyro and things like that. Um, Special glasses, I think they mentioned for um, the like constant flashing lights and th right. uh, things like that. So they're just they're going out of their way to make sure that if these were things that would prevent you from attending a wrestling show in the past, they are working with them now to uh, to allow these people to attend, which again is just <laughs> super cool. Yeah. Um, they also in that video mentioned that Culture City will be training um, the the uh, company the workers there on how to um how to interact and how to properly handle situations with with the the people who require these services so that they you know they know what to what to supply and uh things like that so That's it's just cool. it, it's a it's a really cool thing because this really goes to the whole thing that the bucks and Cody have been and and Kenny Omega of and kind of the motto that we've uh adopted as well of just wrestling is for everyone right so and it's real easy to think about the fact that if you're someone who doesn't, you know, have these concerns, it's real easy to just take that for granted 
of yeah, it doesn't. You can go to a loud show or a rock concert or things like that, and the, the loud music doesn't no, uh, bother you. The the sudden explosions of the pyro don't bother you. Um, but it, you know that's not the case for a lot of people, right? And yeah. so you know if that's keeping them from being able to enjoy, enjoy live wrestling, then that's a bummer. It's, so it, it's super cool that they're. This is you know the first. This will be the first actual. Um, an inclusive event like this. And hopefully this is something that gets adopted with, you know, all the major companies and maybe someday like all companies in general, because I agree with you that they, they should, um, we should cater to everybody, not just people that are healthy enough or, you know, don't have the issues that can come to the show. You want everyone to be able to have fun and enjoy your show. Right. Also, it's May 25th. So I was right. For saying. double or nothing. For double or nothing. Yeah. Okay. So it, 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 that, that's just like, that is, it's one of those things that it's like, that is, I just think that's so cool. I do too. Like yeah. I, I love that. I love that idea. Again, that it's good to have good news the, occasionally. My like, and if if I had to pick one like downside to it, it's that this wasn't announced beforehand, because now you know the show sold out already. Yeah. So it's it's one of those things where it's like, well, if someone didn't buy tickets because of that, you know, but then you could, but there is that resellers market that you know people could still potentially get tickets, but which is shitty. Yeah, I hate the resale market and everything. Mm-hmm. Um. This is a wrestler I'm not too familiar with, so you're going to have to give me some history on this person. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I see it as a women's wrestler, Luf- Lufisto, mm-hmm. uh, announced Excuse me, announced her retirement. I'm, out, I'm actually reading about it now over on uh, Canoe Slam Sports. She, um, she put a, a pretty heartfelt Facebook announcement um, announcing that her retirement due to a ongoing knee injury that she has just been kind of her, – her knee – she has like the knee of an 80-year-old with no cart cartilage because she didn't want to be considered lesser because Lufisto, for those who don't know, is a very iconic women's independent wrestler. And she's only 39 yeah. for the record. She's um, super young. She is a, she broke down a lot of uh, barriers in the independent wrestling scene for women. And it's one of those things where it's kind of a shame that she's not going to get, she may not get the she she's not able to end her career in the way that she would like um and that it's kind of being taken from her um but also that you know there's there's a solid chance that there's a lot of people who aren't going to know to know her and know how um uh, influential she is for a lot of women's wrestler cuz she did a lot of she's very well known for um death matches and things like that. She really kind of proved that and intergender wrestling as well. Um, she is, she's very influential in, in those markets. And um, it, it's really a shame to see. Cause like even in her post, she mentions having to, she's already canceled a lot of appearances. She may have to cancel a few other appearances yeah, I'm that right now. Yeah. Um, she's hoping to work with promoters about getting, you know, one more match with certain opponents or at certain places. Um, I do like her. Uh, she said, "39 might be too old, might be old for wrestling, but there can be many years of happiness ahead if I dedicate myself to something else. Yeah, find a new passion or rediscover one from the past. I let go so I, as a simple human being, can smile once again and accept the things I cannot change or control." Yeah, which is a gr- fantastic outlook. Yeah, um, and I and I truly do hope that she's able to find um, something. Uh, that that, that she wrestlers, can dedicate herself to because it's one they, of those they find th- success outside of the ring, which but is then, great. But at the same time, you have there are a lot of wrestlers who it's wrestling. Terry Funk. Yeah, it's yeah. like if they can't wrestle, Rick that's Flair. that's the only thing they've ever wanted to do. Right. So I, I I genuinely hope that she um uh, finds something that she can be as passionate about and pour herself into because like she said, thirty nine is not old by any stretch. That is still very young. Uh, mm. you, you know, for a wrestler, especially with someone who. Um, because one of the things she mentions in that post, I'm sure you just read, like when she first hurt her knee, she wanted to come back as soon as possible because she, she wouldn't tell people that she was injured. She wouldn't tell people that she was sore. Every wrestler is sore, right. but she couldn't show it because she was a woman and she was, she didn't want to be perceived as weak. Right. And she didn't, she wanted to prove that women can do it just as well as men can. Right. And, and there, there is a lot of people who, especially on the independent scene, I know like that, you know, they wouldn't be where they are now. Without Lufisto, I would right. make the argument that, like the the in WWE, even like this new re- resurgence of women's wrestlers and women's wrestling being taken seriously, that's no small part because of the people who are there now had people like Lufisto to look up to and to set that precedent that they could do, they can wrestle, they can be in matches with men, they can do these death matches style. So it's 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 a real shame that 
this has to happen this way. It's a hard thing to walk away from when you have something that you love so much. But if your health, you don't want to be, you know, she's 39 now. You don't want to be 45 and in a wheelchair. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's like edge, you know, right. talking about how, you know, the, stone cold. Yeah. Well, these guys that had to leave the game early because mm-hmm. of legitimate, like, it threats was, of their future. C- because it was either you can maybe wrestle another year, but then spend the rest of your life in a wheelchair, or you can leave now and still have that mobility still have the option of doing other things in your future i think a lot of people forget and i don't want to talk about it too much but a lot of people forget that wrestling because you you hear wrestling and you think fake but i mean i shouldn't even have to say it but wrestling is a hard thing to do like the things that you put your bodies through in professional wrestling and not just the guys that are you know the the ricochets and the the um the will ospreys the people that like flip around and hurt themselves not just the marcos stunts Mm -hmm. that that you know or the mikeys that do hardcore matches not the people that do death matches but even just basic professional wrestling i i I know i very often come back to hulk hogan but hulk hogan is someone that you could accuse of being not a great wrestler Mm -hmm. especially in his older days but part of that is because the man was so broken down Mm -hmm. from years of just wrestling dropping the leg drop that leg drop is why he cannot walk right as as, like it is is how he is why he walks how he walks now so anytime you see somebody like Lufisto, 39 years old, retiring from wrestling, it's like, wow, but you're so young. It's like, yeah, but imagine all of the <laughs> mileage you put on that body yeah. in the years you've been doing this. Like, especially doing the, the type of matches that she was doing. Right. Uh, like, you know, I, I've said it before. I am not a fan of deathmatch wrestling. Right. Um, Same. But I absolutely. But it has its market. But it, I mean, it has its market. It's, that's not even the point I'm making. It's the fact that, like, I do have a great respect for what they pe- the people who choose to do that what they put their body through to entertain that market like that is insane yeah it's there's always a part of me that has always wanted to be a wrestler as you too i'm sure all mm-hmm. of us except maybe ali i don't think dalton never did he never wanted to be a wrestler no well good to see that he's keeping that tradition going fuck uh, <laughs> sorry he should savage been, he should have been here he's not in the room oh uh, but i never wanted to do death matches mm-hmm. there's no part oh yeah of me no like yeah that, like i i would say i will do that but i'm not doing that mm-hmm. anyway uh some good news some cool news nxt uk announced some signings Mm-hmm. Uh, some of these people I, I do know pretty well and some I'm, I'm familiar with so I'm kind of curious to see how that goes this uh, is one I can hear Dalton just like <gasps> get excited there's about there's a disturbance in the force somewhere yeah. well I wish he was here to pronounce this first name Aisha? Ilja? Uh, I think it's Ija Ija? Ija Dragunov which mm-hmm. by the way Dragunov is such a cool name that's mm-hmm. such a cool last name I rank that up there with like Cervantes as like my favorite fighting ga- video game names <laughs> uh, Kaylee Ray Jazzy mm-hmm. Gabert, which is very cool to see Jazzy Gabert getting signed. Yes. Uh, Oliver Salter, I think, mm-hmm. and Primate J. Melrose. Yep. It's an interesting nickname. He's the one that wrestles in the chip mask. And now it makes sense. Yep. <laughs> he is grookey. He, damn it, I was going to make that joke. You I'm stole faster. It from me. Ah, Impact. So congratulations to them. Impact beginning to air. Replays on Twitch. Mondays at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, and it's available on Video On Demand on app Tuesday. Yes, which is just, it, it's it's another really good step, I think, in that they, so they're on the network that they're on now, but they also stream on Twitch on Friday nights, um, and now they're doing replays on Twitch on their Twitch channel Mondays at uh, 6 Eastern, five that's 5 Central here, um, and then it's going on the, uh, I think it's the Global Force Network app uh, on Tuesday as VOD. So, uh, just there's there's a lot of ways to be able to watch Impact. Um, We've come a which, long way since being sandwiched in between stuck, episodes of Mountain Monsters, yeah, and stuck on, on like Destination Pop, America and Pop TV and stuff like that. Yeah, so so now uh, it just again just Impact be, continues to just make really good decisions and really good moves, and I hope this you know pays off to them and really helps grow their audience. I agree because there's it, there's a lot of really cool stuff going on um, at Impact right now. And it's always great when you have – anytime you have successful companies, that means more places people can work. Uh, it means more options for wrestling fans. Mm-hmm. There's no harm in having options. Right. You know, no, no comp- competition is it, competition is a good thing. It, you can make the argument, and most people do, that the best time ever for a wrestling fan was during – and we're kind of seeing that again. I will say that right now. We're seeing a resurgence. It's not the Monday Night Wars again, but the, the, um, the rise of the indies mm-hmm. – 
is even though it's not a direct competition with WWE, it's that same like, oh, look at our options. Oh, look how look how cool it is to be a wrestling fan right now. Right. Um, the Monday Night Wars in the '90s, of course. You know, WCW inspired WWF to become better. Right. Which then inspired WCW to become much worse. <laughs> and then one of well, them and died. It's, it's one of those things where I think like everyone keeps talking about the Monday Night Wars like coming back, like it's AEW, and I think we're already kind of seeing the the beginning of that. Mm. Like it's already happening, and it's not going to be. That war is not going to be done on network television. I don't. It's think. not going to be fight one on one against each other at the same time slot. Right. It's just going to be you know. Oh look now, now independent wrestling, and we have said this so many times before. Um, but like there are so many ways to be able to watch independent wrestling mm-hmm. that were ne- used to. It was you had to be there live, or you had to hope someone had a tape of it that you could trade off. Whereas now you have there's places streaming on Twitch. There are, uh, um, you have places like High Spots Network and uh, uh, Powerbomb TV, Fight TV. Even YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, there there are so many options you have to be able to find wrestlers that you want to follow and promotions you want to follow. So it's 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 just awesome. And like I said, I just, I wanted to give credit to Impact because again, they were making good moves and I don't, I feel like I dropped the ball in putting news stories together and I failed to mention them as much as I should, as much as I would like to. I think we've had that criticism of ourselves before, even before we started, before you started doing like all the notes when we were like, I don't even remember how it used to go. I'll be honest with you. Um, but I, I, I know Hunter used to do it back in the old days. I don't know if I've ever done it, but we always felt like there was a lack. Sometimes it felt like we just talked about WWE all the time, mm-hmm. which was hard for us to, to not do because we were, that's what we had available to us the most. But like mm-hmm. you just mentioned, I think it proves your point that we have so many options now to watch these other shows like Dalton with New Japan World, mm-hmm. um, all the, all the different options. They're just, they, they give you, they give you such space to be the wrestling fan that you want to be. Yeah. And I hope it's a good choice. Whatever you choose to watch, don't be a shitty wrestling fan. <laughs> uh, Young Bucks versus Lucha. Take two. L- the Young Bucks versus the Lucha Bros uh, got announced for Double or Nothing. That's exciting. That's going to be ignorant. Yeah, I did see. So we watched a botch of Mania the other day, and it had the Lucha Bros on it mm-hmm. versus I don't remember who they were wrestling, but something went very wrong. And they ended up just looking confused. And the match, they just kind of walked around. It, I'd have to show you the clip. I can't do it justice. Mm-hmm. But it was very much a, like, what is going on right now in this <laughs> match? Very interesting to watch. But that is going to be a very, very, very cool. Have you, cool uh, Allie, have you had a chance to see much of their stuff, the Lucha Bros? I have not. Pentagon and Phoenix? They I were heard at, their um, names. I think you would, like, that's, that's a team that I think you would really like. That's Because they're, like, I... I would recommend you watch Impact because I think there's a lot there that you would really enjoy. Uh, and a lot you wouldn't. I, oh yeah, there's there's you stuff probably that, wouldn't like Scarlet Bordeaux. Uh, I see, and I don't know, but the, because the way that they treat her character is she isn't. Yeah, she's the smoke show, but it's because she chooses to be. Yeah, she's empowering. Yeah, it's not the it's the bayonetta effect, right? And now that you know she's going into that story with fucking Gilberti. Ugh. Anyway, I like Allie. Hi. No, 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 <laughs> not, not that Allie. Well, Other thanks. Allie. Do you like Dark Allie? I do. I like Allie and Rosemary together. I I, mm-hmm. I also I was never a big fan of Sue Young, but she's mm-hmm. growing on me because you know me. I have a hard time buying into the supernatural side of when it gets it, like the Undertaker was as far as I go. Mm-hmm. And Kane, Undertaker yeah. and Kane, but they take it so far with the Sue Young character that it it's jarring. It's like Matt Hardy. It's jarring when you see it in a realistic setting, right? When it's sandwiched between two like grounded stories, wrestling and things. matches. Yeah, yeah. But Sue Young herself is pretty cool. Yep. All right, moving on. WWE hits 40 million subscribers on their YouTube channel. It is the seventh most popular channel on YouTube. You can, you know, who you can thank for that. Zack Ryder. <laughs> Zach. Every no. day, Zack Ryder looks in his mailbox for his thank you check. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you're not wrong. He kind of revolutionized wrestler presence. On he really did. He revolutionized. Like you wouldn't have um, being the elite without Zack Ryder. You wouldn't have. Uh, uh, Seamus's workout channel, which yeah. is super entertaining. Demandy, by the way. Demandy's Donuts. Yeah, uh, which is my favorite show now. Have you watched it? <laughs> I haven't seen any of it, but it's her and uh, Sonya Deville. It's Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, and they're so funny together. And they just eat donuts. Mm-hmm. I never realized how charismatic Sonya Deville was until oh, yeah. I saw this show and yeah. her stuff on Up Up Down Down. Yeah, and like Up Up Down Down wouldn't be a thing right. without it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they, like with with the prominence of YouTube now, we may have eventually gotten there, but. 
but Zack Ryder was so ahead of the game. Yeah. Like he he it was oh, it's so good. But yeah, but that's that's pretty that's pretty big news considering that, you know, WWE you feel like it always feels like wrestling is still such a very niche thing and we're in this kind of like small club yeah. with everybody. Um but, but it's for not. The, but now they are the seventh largest <gasps> YouTube channel. Now are there any qualifications for that? Like is it no, I company think, based or no? I think it's just they have just the most subscribers. Yeah, because it's. I think number one is still PewDiePie, or it's that Pew, weird PewDiePie and T Series are going back and forth. Yeah, I think PewDiePie has been ahead pretty consistently. I don't follow either of them, so I don't know. Um, but like Game Grumps, huge YouTube channel, right? Yeah, they just crossed the five million subscriber mark. WWE's at forty million people. Like that's it's, it's ins- crazy. It's insane. It's, it's an insane number, and yeah, so it's so congrats to them. Mm-hmm. Again, throw Zach a little extra money. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I do watch the YouTube channel of uh, WWE for cuz that's do they host they host up up down down on it, don't they? No, that's his own up up down down is his own channel. They don't do anything for them. And I'm not no. I'm not calling you a liar. I'm just I don't know why I had it in my head that there was something cuz Zach Ryder his own channel which was the you Z- know the Long Island IZ mm-hmm. the true, Z, true true Long yeah, Island story. That was eventually picked up by WWE and they moved it over to WWE's channel and right. that's kind of when it died. WWE works with like I'm pretty sure WWE funds Up Up Down Down but Up Up Down Down is its own channel with its own exclusive content. And good. Yeah. Good. That's I guess that's why he goes by Austin Creed. Yeah. Which by the way today was the 3 year the- anniversary. Uh, when we hung out with Austin Creed oh, yeah. here at Gaming Grounds, which was one of the coolest moments we've ever had. So it's three years and a few months since he started following me on Twitter. Son of a bitch. <laughs> How long has it been since we played Battleborn with him one time? <laughs> and, then, and he didn't respond to me. and was like, hey, we've actually met in person. We played. Did we win? No. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Instant delete. Unfollow. Uh, we got a new entrant into the Hall of Fame. And this, I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago of people that we were shocked weren't in the Hall of Fame yet. Mm -hmm. I am legitimately shocked when I saw Honky Tonk Man. That just seems like a name that should have been in the Hall of Fame years ago. I mean, Dalton could speak more to this than I could because I think he's more aware of it. But like, I don't think the Honky Tonk Man has been, and I think Cody might have even brought it up in the group chat. No, not liked, but like, he has been very critical of the Hall of Fame itself. Um... Now, for I don't know his reasons because I'm not I don't keep up with that side of things. Right. Um. I don't know if it's because he has like actual gripes. You know, there's not a physical one. Maybe it's because there is someone who isn't in it that you know. So you can't call it because there's people who genuinely like if you're not if can't Owen Hart is not in the Hall of Fame, you can't call it the Hall of Fame type deal. Right. Um. And you know, there, there's a list a mile long of names <laughs> like that. Um. But or if it's one of those things where he didn't like it because he wasn't in it. Uh, I don't it's know. It's crazy how that happens, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I don't think anyone can truly argue that the Honky Tonk Man doesn't belong in the Hall of Fame. One of the most legendary intercontinental champions of mm-hmm. all time. Uh, great gimmick. Great look. Mm-hmm. Um, never cared for him personally, I'll say. Like, I never was a huge he was, fan of his He was shtick. before my time as a wrestling fan. He was right. So I grew up in the 80s, obviously. Yeah. He was... When he was prominent in WWE, was right about when I was a kid, like very small child. Mm-hmm. But I do have memories of the Honky Tonk Man. He he was one of the the top guys. But I just I never cared for him in general. And then later, when you learn about these people that they are outside of the ring, right? You grow to dislike them even more. Mm-hmm. The only reason I still like Hulk Hogan as much as I do is because I had an affinity for him in the eighties. The rose colored glasses, yeah. <laughs> If I had not been a huge fan of him then, and then I found out what he was like now, mm-hmm. I wouldn't care. Yeah, but I still have that connection. Whereas with the since Hulk you were never really a fan, I was never a fan of, of Honky, Honky Tonk. Tonk to begin with. Yeah, same thing with Greg Valentine. Mm-hmm. And not only that, I need if you're a wrestling <laughs> fan and you love Greg Valentine and you think I'm crazy for saying this, prove me wrong. I found him to be the most boring legend. Of possibly all time. Not only is he kind of a garbage person in real life, but just <laughs> watching him, he was so boring. He looks like a leather bag, first off, <laughs> and he wrestles like, you know, he's in slow motion. I don't know. I was never a fan. Sorry, Axe. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening. God, Axe. That's my thing. It's my rant. It's one of those things where it's like, and we'll talk about Stride here in a, in a little while, but it's like, Axe should be a billionaire. Axe is probably like Axe. Like I like. There's no. Re- I can't think of a reason that like 
He there, should just be money. Like I uh, love a lot of the guys on the Stride roster. Obviously, mm-hmm. you know we support them, but Axe has always been my personal favorite. He's just he's an '80s guy. Right. And I'm an '80s guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't. How am I? What am I supposed to relate with with Scott Phoenix? With <laughs> you know anime. No. <laughs> anyway. Where was I? So I congratulations know. to the Honky Tonk Man. Yeah. <laughs> Making it to the Hall of Fame. You would think that would be the – that he very well could be the top – the headliner. He could be. On a on a slow year, he could be the headliner. There, yeah, there it is on a slow year. If it was like him no, I mean, and he's one of the Mason. Most, he's like one of the most iconic intercontinental champions of all time. And, and isn't and he he's Jerry one Lawler's of the, like cousin? That I have no idea. I'm pretty sure he's, he's like Lawler's cousin. And he, and he is one of like, you know – Whatever your feelings are towards him as a performer, he is one of the more iconic, more recognizable figures to come out of the eighties. Because he was Elvis. Yeah, he was. He was rockabilly. You know, he was an Elvis character. Mm-hmm. And as far as I know, I, I had never known anyone else to portray that kind of character before. Mm-hmm. So he did it well too. He yeah. did it really well. His work with Jimmy Hart was really, really good. And then of course he teamed up with the the leather the leather bound edition of a wrestler, Greg Valentine, and. I, what did Greg? I don't know where this just like sudden tirade of like Greg Valentine hatred comes. Well, of course, from. Greg Valentine. He doesn't agree with the women wrestling. He doesn't. You know, he. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know, man. Those a lot of those older wrestlers they were not very progressive, and they have not <laughs> changed with the times. Uh, He's starting had? to crack around the face area too. <laughs> Need to talk to Ashley Larry. Get some moistness up there. All right, let's talk about Raw before I dig myself. A deeper <laughs> hole with Greg the Hammer Valentine and Jason. I swear to God, <laughs> <laughs> Jason doesn't listen to this. That's true. <laughs> if oh, someone's gonna snitch to him. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about Raw. There were some pretty cool things that happened on Raw. Obviously, we just talked about uh, Roman Reigns' Reigns back, return, which was very very cool. Um, there was something that happened that I really liked, and I am struggling to think of it. Uh. So I'm just gonna Help. run down. I'm gonna run down the notes that I have for Raw um, yes. that I wanted to bring up. Uh, we of course talked about Roman Reigns. We talked oh, about the, the ending. It was the ending, of course. I we'll get to that that's in a what, yeah, I yeah, assumed. Yeah. I assumed it wasn't that because that seems very well. The Ronda Rousey thing I thought was interesting too. Um, it was fine. She, her laying the title down because she wants to face Becky uh, because she earned the spot. When, it, but she did that to Stephanie when Vince was the one who made the call, right? And they have to, which we get, there's conspiracy theories left and right there, um, which we'll get to more on SmackDown. Um, I kind of like the interview that Corbin gave, where um, I think it was Charlie Caruso was like, "Hey, so remember all that bullshit you said?" No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I mean, we have tape. I mean, well, what? A, and he just like got flustered, so it looks like. So if that is the six man tag of it's like the Shield versus. Uh, Corbin, Lashley, Corbin, and Elias, or McIntyre, or McIntyre. Um, yeah. Then that could very well because it seemed like Dean and uh, Ambrose and Elias were going to start a thing. Yeah. Um, Man, in what world? If this were the '80s, again, we we said this about the um, what was the League of Evil League of Evil Gentlemen League of Nations. Yeah. In in the '80s, if you had a guy like Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, and Elias oh, on yeah. a team together, even Corbin, even Corbin. Holy yeah. smokes! That would be that would be your like unstoppable, un- insurmountable. Unless you're Hulk Hogan, and then you beat all of them in one night. <laughs> or unless you're Roman Reigns, and you beat all of them in one night. Or if you were John Cena, or you beat, beat, beat them all in one, one night. night. Um, <laughs> does wrestling reuse tropes? Ah, uh, nothing I'm aware of. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, Allie. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's, it seems like they're kind of setting up Corbin to be the uh, the the fall guy for when Roman returns, which. He's disliked enough that that'll work really well. Yeah, say what you will about Baron Corbin, and I frequently do. He is, <laughs> <laughs> he is really over as a bad guy. Yeah, like, and he's good at it. Mm-hmm. Like, I think Corbin just he, and he and he walks the line of like the go away heat right. very well. Yeah, because I don't think I genuinely don't think he has that. Just go. I know there are people who have that who they just don't want to see him anymore. Yeah, I've I have enjoyed Corbin for a while now. Um, yeah. I it took me a while to warm up to him. But like even before he joined the main roster, uh, I think he has a lot of potential. He it's it's an odd choice, yes, that he shouldn't still be wrestling in his GM gear. Uh, that's dumb. But Which, again, I think a, he does, I think he's doing because people don't like it, right? I and think, that's the point of wrestling. Yeah, is to sell. You know, I think he's in a way better position than when he had the long hair and he was the lone wolf and mm-hmm. had the biker entrance and all that. Like, he's which I do much I, more. Disciple. I will say, like, I like his music now. Which he has the last song Jim Johnson did for WWE uh, is his current music now. Um, but I did love the like where he walked into the lights. 
the spotlights and stuff. That was I, cool. I like Corbin. Come at me, internet. <clears throat> um, they will. <clears throat> the Revival lost again. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, so they have yet to win a match since becoming tag team champions. What type? <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to... I'm gonna pull a, uh, a smoky, I think, or I forget who it was on Friday. What type of shit is that? <laughs> Are you, so you're trying to keep the revival in WWE? You give them keep the them titles, happy. yeah, and then you have them lose two weeks in a row to guys that just got called up. Yeah, to DIY. Yeah, um, yeah. So and I get it because it's, it's Ricochet and Aleister Black. Mm -hmm. Like they should be legitimate threats. Mm -hmm. But like Christ, but, do you have but do you to do it at the expense? The tag champs? Yeah, yeah. Uh, of the new tag champs, the tag champs who just won the championship and have not had a successful match since. Have them beat the Authors of Pain. Authors of Pain, right. you're, you're doing nothing with them. They're big and strong, and everybody knows they're dangerous. Yeah, it makes no sense. Um, by Dash, <laughs> that was a thing on Reddit. Someone was like, "Hideo Itami," like. Oh, Hideo Itami asked for his release? Okay. Ty Dillinger asked for his release? Okay. TJP says nothing. Okay, you can go too. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> the Revival. Us? Please? No. <laughs> Shut up. You're the champions. You're the champions. <laughs> Where are you going? Um, and then, yeah, the, the big there was the big uh, Ric Flair birthday celebration. They brought out Sting. They brought out Steamboat. Um, they uh, All of the wrestlers are on the stage. Which, again... I said this to Allie during the show, how unsettling it was to see Braun Strowman in just a t-shirt and jeans out there smiling and clapping. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. Just, I don't it was that, like it. Was it was that same thing when, when Dalton and I first started going to Stride and we before we were friends with him, when we just ran into Math Matthias. Right. We just saw Roger in plain street clothes in the mall and we were like, oh, you're just a human being yeah. who like exists out in the world. Yeah. Well, no, it's unlikely. You 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 are supposed to be in a wrestling combat sports setting all the time, and not just a person, right? Um, but yeah, you know you're right. Um, and then yeah, the uh, Ric Flair's music hits. Nothing happens. Cut backstage in one of the most brilliant moves of you just see Batista before you can really recognize like what's going on, dragging a cameraman behind him to Ric Flair's room, busts in, slams the door. You hear the scuffle, and then he just drags Ric Flair's lifeless body out. See, okay, so I have a problem with the segment. Mm -hmm. I, I thought the timing was weird because as I took it, and I wish they were a little bit better explaining it, I think Batista had already beat Flair up because otherwise, why the hell was Flair not at gorilla that i mean that's a, which i mean and he might have and he might have just gone back to like rough him up more and he was dragging the cameraman yeah, I, to I think show he wanted he to did. show yeah he wanted the cameraman to see it but i mean that's just picking apart yeah things. that's i mean that's just kind of a nitpick yeah thing. but the segment was super effective when batista said hunter you know do i have your attention now mm -hmm. i was like holy that's <gasps> awesome yeah that was and batista looked great mm -hmm. looked great um I everyone else cool. looked kind of weird just standing around like oh man I don't Ooh, I ain't there's a whole with... there's a whole army of us that could probably go do something about this i ain't messing with that guy <laughs> i don't know why hank hill was there it also kind of it, it, another little another little nitpick was um when they were going backstage and you saw hunter rushing to, to like to him there were too many people just sitting down like in the in the back, just like I, I work for WWE. It happens, not a big deal. This hey, happens see, all the time. You see Flair, yeah, he's over there. He's laid out. Go get him. Someone, no, oh, someone got attacked backstage. I also thought, man, I bet Sting was glad he showed up. <laughs> <laughs> he just he did. Sting and Flynn Steamboat. They didn't even do <laughs> anything. Like at least after the so after the show, uh, Jinder Mahal and the Singh brothers got beat up. Mm -hmm. And Sting still didn't do anything. <laughs> Kurt Angle beat, I think, all three of them up on his own. Yeah. And Sting and, and Steamboat just sat there watching. And I thought, man, man, you pull Sting out to just, <laughs> he doesn't say anything. He just walks out and stands there. Yeah. It reminded me when they brought Paul Orndorff out for the Hogan segment. <laughs> and and Orn, God knows Orndorff wasn't going to do anything because he's so frail. But, like, it's just awkward. But it was a cool segment. I yeah. loved it. I can't wait. Very effective. Orton or Orton Batista Batista versus Triple H at Wrestlemania was the match I never wanted mm -hmm. but I'll watch it yeah. I just I love Batista I really do I think he's done so well for himself and it's kind of neat that you can go back to like even the the evolution reunion yeah where he there is that tense moment of well you never beat me or when he quit yeah when he quit originally because mm -hmm. you know he was like Hunter you know you promised me my title matches and you just had me fighting the shield all the time yeah I quit 
Yeah. So yeah. Th- like it, it, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, th- that kind of like long term, like they may not, they may not have known this they, was coming. They lucked into it. But it just, yeah, they, yeah. they kind of, they set themselves up great. Um, SmackDown, was there anything else that? Also, oh. The Rock was backstage at Raw, which was kind of interesting. Really? Yeah, he was, he was strictly there to do interviews for fighting with my family. Oh, okay. Um, but it was just odd that The Rock was there. He didn't take part in the Roman Reigns thing, which was cool because you don't want to take that away from Roman. Right. Like that would have been shitty. If the there's Rock also apparently there. a story. There's apparently a story um, saying that why Dean wasn't on the ramp with him and Seth when with Roman and Seth because he was too emotional. I I want that to be true. I also want yeah. that to be true, but no. yeah, it's one of those things where it's like eh, it's a it's a rumor. We're going to take that with a couple of grains of salt. Um, the only other thing was like I don't like that they've just turned Alexa Bliss into a horn dog. I haven't watched any of her segments. I'm kind of point, scared too. Uh, the, well, there was the there was the segment with EC3 a couple weeks ago, who, by the way, lost on main event to Apollo Cruz. So, what? So that's what. Uh, okay, but somebody cost him the match to set up a there, huge match, right? Th- there's our uh, there's your first batch of NXT call ups. Um, and then yeah, and then Holy she shit. there was a uh, she was she interviewed Balor and said, well, it's a shame that you know that championship holds hides some of your abs. And then it sounded like she was going to do a thing where if you show you yours, I'll show you mine type bit. But but then she got interrupted before with the Leo Rush thing. So yeah, not a huge fan of that. Well, they're trying to bring that sexuality back. Mm-hmm. Lacey Evans, I think, walked down the ramp and back up. She did yes. because Allie said, "Did she just walk out and Is leave?" That, yes. It's, just mm-hmm. thing it's Emelina. Yeah. It's just it's except just, she actually shows up. It's not just a video. Yeah. <laughs> it's what the next four months of Emelina would have been. Right. Um, SmackDown. Um, we'll get to the big one uh, in a minute, uh, just because there's a couple things that uh, I wanted to point out. They were supposed to have um, G- Johnny Gargano versus Cesaro in a singles match was advertised, but instead that got changed to the Bar and the Hardy Boys. So Matt Hardy made his return officially. That may have just been a one-off thing because they were in North Carolina as well. Well, I read that they did extend. All right, so did you read about the contract thing? I did, but I didn't understand it. I didn't either because apparently they activated some clause that keeps him there for another year. Because Matt Hardy had said like last week that his contract only had like 11 days left, which a wrestler using social media to gain traction in a contract negotiation. Matt Hardy using social media. <laughs> <laughs> Unprecedented. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, but apparently, yeah, that him and Jeff are both on for another year. Something act got activated. I'm not familiar with it enough to really speak to it, though. I'm really curious if that's true, if that's just a story, because if it is true that WWE had, uh, they had a clause where they could keep them a year, uh, even if they didn't want to, mm-hmm. and they use that, and you know they use that specifically because of AEW. Mm-hmm. If AEW didn't exist, they would have let them go. You can go back to Impact. We don't care. Whatever. Yeah. Um, that's kind of shitty. On WWE's part, but it makes sense, but it's mm-hmm. kind of shitty. Um, I'm curious to know if that's true or if this is just one of those. See, in the way I read, he it, had an option and he said yes. See, and that's what that's the way I read it is that this was their choice to activate. Like it was their choice to activate the clause. Yeah. Like when they originally signed, it was only for you know however many years it's been. Uh, but if X Y Z happens, then you can choose to extend it for a year. That's the way that I read it. Is it wasn't WWE's call; it was the Hardys' call. Right again. I don't want to speculate too much on it because I am so, like, I'm ignorant on the subject. Yes. So I don't. I don't want to just like ignorant. throw. I don't want to throw stuff out. Um. So that got canceled. Uh. Also, no DIY on SmackDown. We got Aleister Black and Ricochet against uh Nakamura and Rusev. So two two nights in a row. They wrestled as tag team for no reason. Yeah, other than because I don't. Other I, than we need to put them on the show. Yeah, I still don't fully understand what's going on with any of this, especially like in the build up to WrestleMania season. They haven't really given anything. Uh, they haven't really given them anything meaningful. Yeah, uh, and everything that they do, like all of the interviews they do, are just like so basic and yeah. not. It's. Uh, I guess it's um, still better I, than what they're doing for EC3, but I will say the. Uh, I did love the. There's there's a clip from their match that was pulled of Aleister Black and Nakamura wrestling, and Aleister Black just sits down under a Nakamura kick, and it's like, oh, that's a feud I really want that I never really thought of because like Nakamura's whole you know come on thing, yeah. But then Aleister Black doing the you know backflip into just the seated position, I. That's one of those matches that everyone always says if Nakamura is motivated, mm-hmm. um, if he's motivated, that would be an incredible match. Yeah. Hard hitting, shit kicking, just fantastic match. Yeah, so that that would be really cool to see. Um, it also looks like the seeds were planted for a potential AJ Styles Randy Orton WrestleMania match, 
just in the in a backstage segment, which also I want to see. Also heard fast lane. It, yeah, and it could be fast lane yeah. as well. Um, they um, even though she wasn't on the show, it was announced that uh, Oscar will defend the women's championship at fast lane against Mandy Rose, even though neither of them were on the show. Uh, well, Mandy's too busy eating them donuts. Well, Charlotte had a cutter promo about the Raw cha- women's champion. Um, and then the big thing, of course, that happened was uh, Vince McMahon, again, makes the announcement that Kofi Kingston will no longer be competing for the WWE Championship at Fastlane. Instead, it's going to be Kevin Owens. This is interesting for a few reasons. Um, is one of them because Kevin Owens headbutted Vince McMahon once and feuded with like his family, seemed, yeah, and is now being rewarded for it. Well, th- that, but also the Kevin Owens character um, seems to still be playing to that face, like he he's face like he's a face Owens. Um, but because even in the interviews he gave, he talked about like how great it was to be with his family for you know uh, since October, and also how deserving Kofi Kingston is. And but he's like, I'm not going to say no to this opportunity, type deal. Um, so that's kind of an interesting character dynamic that. He's being put in a position that the crowd will not accept because Kofi is that, you know, organic build. They want to see it. It's been 11 years type thing. Um, But at the same time, this is Kevin Owens coming back and the Internet already loved him. Right. So So either this either they're building to something mm -hmm. or they legitimately wanted to take Kofi out of the match and thought Owens would be a safe bet. And I genuinely think that they are doing they are scrambling plans because they see this sustainability of Kofi's reaction and like his performance and are putting him in the WrestleMania. What was supposed to be Owens versus Bryan at WrestleMania is now either getting swapped out with Owens, Bryan at Fastlane, Kofi gets the Mania match, or they could do like a triple threat. That's what I'm thinking. Triple of, threat, Kofi loses. Which would be, which would kind of suck because that's literally the story you're telling with the Raw Women's Championship. Right. Yeah. Of, no, this is the person, this is the person who should be competing and the f- crowd wants to see compete. Oh, but also here's someone else inserted into it. Here's someone you didn't want, but you will accept it mm-hmm. because we are. And, and there's a lot of people. Legion. And a lot of people are like speculating now that this is going to lead to, which could be one of the freshest, most original stories we've ever gotten out of WWE, um, a power struggle between the McMahon family. What do you mean? Like you could have, so Vince is the one who is, he's the one who pulled Becky, even though Triple H and Stephanie were going to let, she apologized, they were going to let her have her WrestleMania match. Okay, I'm with you so far. Vince is the one who pulled Kofi, even though, and Shane was looking really confused, like what's going on? So now you have this, oh, Vince is losing it. Vince is going power mad. So then you have actual like face, Triple H, Stephanie, Shane, then start some sort of feud and story with Vince. That whoever, you know, comes out of this may end up with control of the, you know, control of the company as a way to get rid of Vince McMahon. So it would be really interesting to see, like, McMahon versus McMahon with the stake of, with the, with the fate of WWE at stake. I want to say this about this man, Asa Gray, right now. Uh, his acting is so good that I legitimately couldn't and slash can't tell how much of that was sarcasm and how, because he really presented it in a way that I went, that is interesting (laughs) i really did i was like i'm buying into it i'm like that's good story man (laughs) no i mean it's mcmahon in every corner yeah mcmahon in every corner (laughs) um i know so i think uh like it's been on like it's because it like that's not a like original theory like some people are saying that it could be um the triple h versus batista match it could that's that stipulation could be added there Right. Um, some people are th- saying that the uh, even the Raw Women's Championship match it could go there. Vince or versus there could Shane be, Mania. Yeah. Or it could, well, even though it looks or um, someone said that it could be like Miz versus Shane. Well, which that's because it seems like that's the match they might be building towards anyway. But like you could kind of do a weird insertion story there. Maybe like or have like Shane have like Shane side with Vince or have uh, Shane stay good and Miz. Because he can't get his dad's approval because his Shane, him and Shane lost. Now he sees Vince as a father figure. Mm-hmm. And Vince is like showering with the attention that his real dad never gave him. Mm-hmm. Even though we finally just Fucking got, wrote it, man. <laughs> even though we did just get the thing where his dad told him he was proud of him. He's like, oh, it was for the first time. But it took you to do it. Exactly. Type, yeah, type yeah. deal. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of ways it could go. I don't want to see any of it, honestly. The whole bullshit we talked about weeks ago when they first did the, 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 the audio. You're the authority. Well, bullshit. I booked Kofi. So, 
And nobody books Charlotte. <laughs> no one books Charlotte. No one books Charlotte. Uh, if Kofi gets the title shot at Mania, though, and wins the title, fine. Which w- which would be amazing. Um, And it would be kind of incredible to see, you know, Daniel Bryan do for someone what was done for him. Right. Um, The only difference is someone mentioned that someone had pointed out, and it's a really good point, when Daniel Bryan was going up against Randy Orton and Batista, no one wanted to see Randy Orton or Batista as WWE champion over Daniel Bryan. Like, I'm sure there were people, but the vast majority wanted Daniel Bryan to win that. With Kofi versus Daniel Bryan versus Kevin Owens, that is much closer. More split. I feel like the majority still are going to like be are going to be hopeful for, to see Kofi succeed and finally win the WWE Championship. But Daniel's going to have his supporters. But Daniel Bryan's always going to have his supporters, right. and then also Kevin Owens is a very you know beloved figure. All three of those guys residents. are beloved internet darlings, and, and it's one of those things where it's like I don't think there would be you know the the extreme fallout that we would have seen if Daniel Bryan had lost that. But it is it would be a shame to sacrifice Kofi in that way. Um, to j- just to boost like Kevin Owens, and how frustrating also, must this be for Kofi? If if the plan is not for him to win the title, yeah. Even though he's a performer and his job is to perform, it's not like championships and wrestling are real victories because it's but all they, pre predetermined. But to have it so close to you mm-hmm. and to never get it, yeah, and that's on, frustrating. I mean, and and really, it is kind of that that show of respect and gratitude. There, you know, there's a lot of championship runs that are that. Hey, you put in the time. The, here are your flowers right. type deal. And for him to not get that would – yeah, I could see that being really, really frustrating. Um, that said, I want to believe – like I, I, I want to – I want to let that – like I want to think that they're going to do – they're going to give it to Kofi at some point. Um, I do worry that – and then making him tag with Owens, even though there was – you know, there was animosity there. I'm, I don't want to see them like try to turn Kofi. I don't want to see them stall his momentum – because he like had just like he was really really going and to have him just kind of pulled like this for no for literally no reason right I, I, I I'm kind of worried that that might kind of you know to s- slow him down a little uh, also Kevin Owens pinned Daniel Bryan who with the stunner <laughs> with a stunner which was funny um but it's it's Daniel Bryan needs a big win and because. Yeah, he he pinned Kofi at Elimination Chamber, but I, I he needs a very big singles win to reestablish himself as champion because right now he's just losing to everybody left and right. He is the chicken Kofi, shit oh, heel. He's, he's been pinned by Kofi Owens and Mustafa Ali. The revival's over there going like, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> first time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I feel your pain. All right, so the road to WrestleMania continues. We're gonna take a pit stop through Fast Lane mm-hmm. in two weeks. I in think in two like two weeks, uh, but. There is a big event this Saturday. Yes. At uh, it's Stride anniversary. Yes. It is Stride's three year anniversary. Congratulations to them! Wow, that was slurred that as hell. Was. Uh, I'm losing <laughs> my voice. I don't know if you guys could tell. I'm I'm struggling to talk sometimes. I'm losing my voice as this goes on. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm gonna try to get through this show. Uh, do you have the card pulled up? I don't have the full card. Um, because I genuinely forgot Dalton wasn't going to be here. Um, <laughs> I know. Ha! Um, I know a handful of the matches. Uh, I have the poster pulled up here, so Shit. that'll. I just also uh, pulled the poster up. Okay, go ahead. Um, but so the uh, it's going to be the, it's this Saturday. Um, bell time is at six thirty. Uh, it is at uh, six hundred North Carbon Street in Marion, Illinois. So um, get there. It's going to be it's going to be a really fun night. I'm going to go to this one just because I when I want to. So are we? Are you really? Yeah, we were going to yeah. ask if you wanted to go together. Sweet. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm going to that. Um, so we'll all be there. Um. Dalton is in the tag team championship match. He and Dexter Roswell are defending against Farmer Billy Hills and uh, Scott Phoenix. Uh, that'll be fun. Uh, the Legacy Championship will be defended by Cash Borden in a dog collar match Ooh, against Jay Spade. That's gonna be. Sick. I really enjoyed their match when I went and um, when uh, I went to the Stride Show at this at the school uh, here a few weeks ago. Um, I, th- I think they they work really re- really well together. So Those I'm are probably to see that. my two favorite workers in stride mm-hmm. like watching them wrestle mm-hmm. uh wraith versus riser in a first, first blood, blood match. match first ever first in, stride. in stride yeah because they because they're in illinois they can do they that. can do it <laughs> uh joey o'reilly versus jason tiller big fan of joey o'reilly i'm really excited that genuinely like super excited to see him and dexter wrestle yeah but i'm uh, scared now because joey o'reilly's name is spelled differently than i spelled it on the other poster we'll find out <laughs> 
uh, we took a post that he posted. He posted it. He posted it. Um, the uh, the stride cup will be decided, Shit. and then uh, <laughs> you're so worried now. I'm so worried now. Uh, and I can then fix it. there's also going to be Axe Allwart versus Jay Wellington Beauregard. Oh, Jay Well, no. There, there is sure to be some shenanigans afoot. I'm sure. Um, I think this is going to be but, right down the middle. But it's going to be Axe Allwart is going to pile drive the hell out of Jay Wellington Beauregard. And, what if uh, Jay Wells? I, I'm a big fan of Jay Wells. Drives cousin. Axe. I'm a big fan of Jay Wells' cousin, um, Aaron. Oh, Aaron's great. Super nice guy. Aaron's big great. fan of him. Haven't talked to him in a um, while. Miss him. But his uh, but yeah, so he might need to be on the lookout for his cousin. Love there. that ascot though. <laughs> uh, and then the main event is for the stride, uh, the vacant stride uh, heavyweight championship: Heath Hatton versus Tony Flood in a 60 minute Iron Man match. That one's gonna be stupid. Yeah. Uh, Heath and and Tony have just great chemistry together. They work really really well together. Uh, that one's going to be a just ignorant amount of fun. And I'm excited to see, because uh, the the stride championship has been vacant for uh, a couple months now, I think. Yeah. Or definitely a few weeks. I know the last like two shows. So. And it's really cool that Stride is celebrating their three anniversary. Yes. Because it's Stride a huge accomplishment. And... It, it's the second indie show I've ever been to because CCW was obviously my, obviously my first, mm-hmm. and uh, Stride we originally went to go see because of Billy. Yep. And ended up falling in love with Stride as well. Yeah. So we kind of. And that's where we first saw people like Matthias and Joey O'Reilly and uh, other people. That Dexter come, Roswell. Dexter Roswell, yeah. yeah. People have come over from uh, yeah, to, to CCW. So I, no one tell Jason this okay. because, again, I, I don't want to start any trouble. But when you think about the sheer amount of wrestlers from Stride that have done so well in CCW, mm-hmm. um, it speaks to both how well they are trained in Stride and also how good they are yeah. uh, in Illinois to come over to Missouri and also just kick ass. Yep. Dexter is on a roll. Mm-hmm. He's he's killing it. every. Yeah. He's one of the most recognizable and unique superstars in, in CCW. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matthias, when he, until he, he had retired, retire. he was like the one of the biggest threats. Billy, of course, mm-hmm. is probably one of the biggest stars CCW well, arguably has. the most yeah. popular star yeah. in CCW. Uh, Joey O'Reilly is an amazing wrestler. He has done mm-hmm. so well in, in CCW, and he fits so well. Like those guys, it, it's great to see them come from Illinois over to Missouri, and we can kind of share our love with them in both both places. So. Yep, very cool for us. Um, that is this Saturday, mm-hmm. March second, Stride anniversary, six thirty. Uh, if you go to their Facebook page, you can get the address and everything on the poster for the event. So the Pro Wrestling Unscripted crew will be there. Yep, uh, we'll be booing one of our own. Yes, so that'll be fun. Because I boo him in both places. <laughs> I could just hate him everywhere. Uh, speaking of hating him everywhere, uh, we had CCW One Night Riot 2. Yes. Took me a second. Was this past Saturday. And it was a great show. Mm-hmm. If you were a fan, it was a great <laughs> show. For some of us that worked it, it was a hard show. I think, and I don't want to say too much. You know, we're not here to spread rumor. But a couple, I posted this. A couple of us came out of the show kind of feeling bad about ourselves. I did. I also did. Very much so. I was in a very bad mood after that show. I I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I I wasn't in a bad mood. I was just depressed. Mm-hmm. Um, but the show itself was fantastic. No, yeah, yeah. The, the, and like that's and that's the thing that that's part of the reason why I was so mad is because the show was amazing. Right. And I felt like I sucked it up. So it'll be that once when you see it on YouTube, like because I can like I can think back now to like I got people's names wrong. I miscalled moves. I like missed certain things. Like I just was. That's totally, live, man. That's... I was totally off, and it just like it, it, it super bummed me out. Well, um, and you can also watch to see the first time that I've ever truly blown a spot, and I felt so bad about it. Mm-hmm. I apologized backstage like crazy, and I still feel bad about it. You're the only one that. The same can be said about all of our problems. It's no, like yeah. you are the only yes. one that's going to judge you so harshly. Yeah, yes. but we judge the shit out of ourselves. Mm-hmm. And I know Asa said that it was the first night he felt like he didn't belong there, and I shared that sentiment. Mm-hmm. I I was sitting out at ringside during the the Durden uh, Matt Cross match. I'm clutching the title not only because I'm trying to put it over as I'm obsessed with losing it, mm-hmm. but I also just wanted to hug something. And I was telling <laughs> myself, please God, let me just get through this match. Mm-hmm. I don't want to ruin this match. Please just let me get through this match. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was rough. But which the match it's, the match itself was really really good. I really loved the story that they told of. Jake Durden being pretty solidly in control the whole time, yeah. having an answer for everything that Matt Cross was getting ready to throw at him, and then you were there to really tip the scales once he actually got that momentum going. Yeah. Once he got past Jake Durden's defenses, then you were there to kind of the insurance to, to screw things up for yeah. him. Which is what a good um, bad guy. Should and be. even your even your like where you messed up, like it still looked good. Like it looked like that was supposed to happen. Like it well, was the number one rule of performance is when you screw up, 
don't let the audience know you screwed yeah. up. Mm-hmm. You know, because like you could, because you could tell like Matt Cross, he didn't sell, like he didn't, you didn't drop him down, right? He just like, kind of like kicked me away. Yeah, he just kind of, which is that's enough. That's right. just oh, you're distracting him. Yeah, that ref should have kicked me out <laughs> many, many times. Every heel manager ever. Every heel manager ever. Should have just ever. been kicked out. Like they should. Why are you allowed there? <laughs> yeah, I like, shouldn't even come out to ringside. Like after the second time you've done something wrong, just be like, no, go, go. I need go a away. better class of ref. I need to get Kurt Hawkins in here. <laughs> uh, Kurt Hawkins did not allow this hat to happen. Mikey came back. Mikey was yeah. Mikey, Mikey was, was a lot of fun to, to see again. He's so mm-hmm. energetic. And I got just to talk to him backstage a little bit about insane. like Apex Legends and. Uh, he was telling stories about like just places he had been. He's always fun to talk to. Uh, Marco was there, of course. Marco stunt. Mm-hmm. Even though I don't think he did anything, feel- he was just hanging out. He- yeah, he was. He, well, he was there because uh, Logan was there. They they came for the seminar, I think. That makes he sense. He was also on a lot of painkillers. Yeah, because he had just had surgery. Yeah. That I didn't. Well, I knew he had just he had, had surgery. the surgery. He had the successful yeah. successful surgery too. Yes, um, very cool. to, get the, to get the screws taken out of his leg. So yep. he was still um, on a lot of. Pain I also feel like I should apologize to Marco again because he no, came up. He, he came put up his to- bare ass on you while you were doing commentary. I like think you had a right away. to shove his was it ass. The, was it a bare ass? Because I didn't look. It was a bare ass. Okay. Because he, I feel he, less bad. He originally <laughs> walked over to me as I'm I'm kneeling down because I didn't have a seat. I'm kneeling down <laughs> to do commentary. He walks over to me and it took me a second to realize he was literally rubbing his his junk on my shoulder. <laughs> so I kind of looked up at him and just kind of laughed because what do you do? Right. Well, here's what you do because he walks <laughs> around, pulls his pants down, and I see him going to do it, and I look over at him. I like I'm like no, because at this point I'm already I am already having a not great night. Yeah. And then he puts I'm his... very stressed out. <laughs> I see him put his ass toward Asa, <laughs> and Asa shoves him hard. Like, not just like a playful shove. Asa shoved his ass. He loves to shove him. Mm-hmm. He loves to pick him. <laughs> um, and then Marco looked at me like Marco felt bad. And I was like, hey, it's okay. He's just... He's in the moment. Mm-hmm. Like, don't do this right now. But I don't think you have to apologize. I don't think yeah. Marco's upset. Um, he probably I, well, doesn't I mean, remember. He doesn't remember. He may not remember. Because I apologized to him backstage, and he was like, he was fine. But he was just like, I felt bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then... It was a great night. Uh, we had Matt Cross there, obviously. The seminar was really cool. Uh, great action. Go to capewrestling.com if you want to catch up on it. YouTube.com slash Cape Championship Wrestling or, or look it up on YouTube. Mm-hmm. We have newer episodes going up. Um, th- I think probably the biggest news in the moment of the night was that Austin Lane came back at the end of the night. Yep. Um, as you said earlier, Austin was 15 hours out of surgery. And then he made yeah. the drive up there to, to legit. Rebel. And I, and I know he listens to this and, and there's other things that I want to talk about from pretty much each of the matches. Cause there's little things that I picked out that I really enjoyed. Um, I know Austin's listening to this and I say this with love. I'm a little mad that he's back because like seeing him backstage and talking to him, what the suggested time frame was versus the, and I, and I won't spread it here just cause it's, I don't think it's our place to, to do that. But, right. but what the suggested time frame for him to take off was versus the amount of time that he actually took off. Um, I, I genuinely have concern. Like I just I don't want him I don't want you to get hurt. We don't want it to do like I, like we were concerned what, about JD Wood. What happened to JD? Yeah, yeah, he came back too soon and just, and just and got re hurt. And I and Austin has been doing this forever. Right. He knows better. Like he not no he knows better than us. Right. Not that he knows better than what he mm-hmm. he, knew, he knows. Oh, that's screw not those like, doctors. Yeah. No. That that wasn't a like parent scolding <laughs> your child. You know better than that. Like that wasn't that at all. Um. This was you know he understands like he knows his body. He he knows what he's capable of. And I truly think that if he didn't truly believe that he was okay to do it, he wouldn't have done it. Right. Um. It's just I precious cargo. So, I, I there's literally like everybody that we've met through CCW. I genuinely like want the best for. Like it broke my heart when to find out Roger had to retire. Yeah, like that, or when that was JD such a had to retire. And J, yeah, when JD stepped away. Every time like something like that happens, it's just like man, that 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 really sucks. Nikki, and, I, and I don't want to see not being there. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to see that happen to Austin. Right. Um, Agreed. So yeah, do, I, do you want to hear my funny story about that? Sure. Um, so. I knew Austin was coming back. He never back. actually had surgery. He's yeah, no, he was fine the entire time. He just took time <laughs> off. I knew Austin was coming back. And Jason doesn't listen to the show, right? Probably. Okay. So I knew Austin was coming back uh, about a week and a half beforehand because Austin had texted me and talked to me about it. Mm-hmm. Because Austin... Because you were putting together you put together that video package, too. I did. Yeah. And, and a lot, you know, in wrestling, a lot of the stuff you see, like the personal relationships on screen, aren't really carried over into real life. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just an act. Yeah. But Austin is very much a real friend of ours. Yeah. So Austin couldn't not tell me that he was coming back mm-hmm. but he told me not to tell anybody right and i didn't i i kept that to myself mm-hmm. well then jason needed a video made for austin so he said would you do this video and i said <laughs> yeah i will he's like all right well i don't want austin to know that you know so keep it a secret <laughs> so and i did i didn't tell, you didn't tell, I didn't austin, tell that. austin that jason had told me so i made this video for austin and jason 
didn't want anyone to know. Jason went to extreme lengths to keep it a secret. Mm-hmm. So he so ha- did Austin. He posted that like they were going to Jonesboro. The, the family was going to Jonesboro yeah. to yeah. see to see Glass. So Jason has me uh, make this video for him, and he didn't want me to name it Austin Lane because he didn't want he didn't even want Adam, who is our technician, mm-hmm. who runs all the sound and video. Adam's a great guy mm-hmm. and hard ass worker. Yeah. Of uh, he did not want Adam to know, so I named it <laughs> Del Tucker Return Video. <laughs> yeah, because on the sh- on the sheet for he who said Del the, Tucker. The, the last entrant was Del Tucker. The funny part is, is that Adam, which then got my hopes up because I want to see Del Tucker again. <laughs> Maybe in the future, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Adam didn't watch the video, so he thought it was Del Tucker. So he played red lights when Austin came out. Austin's lights are blue. Mm-hmm. And I go backstage after the thing, and Adam was like, you son of a bitch. Next time you... And he's laughing about it, but he, mm-hmm. I still think he was actually mad. Mm-hmm. He's like, next time you find some shit like this out, you tell me. <laughs> so Austin doesn't get mad at me, because Austin got mad I played the wrong lights. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Blue. Oh. So, yeah, we got him. <laughs> we got them all. Uh, so yeah, it was great to see Austin back. Like the crowd was legitimately in a stunt. Like I think we called it as the crowd was in a stunned silence. I think they didn't really think it was him at first. Yeah, it wasn't he until he took the mask, the mask off. Yeah, when he took mm-hmm. the mask off, crowd went nuts. Yeah, but until then, it was such a, a hushed silence of like, no, yeah, no, it's not him. It um, couldn't be right. Um, other than that, like everything else was great. I really enjoyed that casket match. Uh, I didn't get to see much. Honestly, of it. any combination mm-hmm. of those four at this point, yeah. right. I'm all in. Like, just give it to me now, please. And thank God uh, Dexter did not die again. Yes. He is coming he, back. He's, Dexter's coming back in March. Very happy about that. Um, we uh, Ace with that huge dive off the balcony was so, incredible. I didn't see him until the last <laughs> moment. Like, I saw, like, right before he jumped, I was like, oh, <laughs> uh, thing I, happening. I noticed whenever he, like, ducked away. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. So I have to now pay attention to this entire arena Mm -hmm. and then i see him like crawling up where adam is i'm like okay i'm going to move out of the way here too (laughs) i can i can find a good place for this because i was backstage we were at the monitor me Mm -hmm. and uh billy and uh, a couple other people and you know you can see the like where the stairs are going up you can kind of see it like you can see people's feet going up the stairs yeah but it's ace crawling mm-hmm. so as we're sitting there watching the monitor i look up and i just see ace crawling up the stairs and i was like ah shit so, I looked at Billy, he's like he's gonna do something stupid isn't he <laughs> uh, i love that match uh i really enjoyed the tag team match uh weiss church and uh la hustlers that was a lot of fun. It was weird. It was almost like I almost was a little bummed out at how good you were at getting the crowd behind the hustlers. Because I was, I'm thinking like you were the biggest bad we have. Like you're the big threat. Like, and the crowd loves them. And I'm wondering if that's what Jason intended, or if he thought maybe they would like rally behind the Wise Church. See, that's what I thought. But the Wise Church did such a good job of making sure that yeah. didn't happen. So yeah. going into this match, I thought the Wise Church were going to play the faces, mm-hmm. and I thought we were going to be the heels because, like you said, we're the the bad guys of the mm-hmm. show. But as we go out, the wise church are so unlikable <laughs> that the crowd is like giving them shit. And I'm like, okay. I and got- the LA Hustlers are just recently like bad guys now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I thought, okay, we got a choice here. Mm-hmm. I can either try to turn the crowd good for mm-hmm. us so you have a face heel dynamic, or we can go double heel. Mm-hmm. And I was worried that people wouldn't would lose interest. Would lose interest. Because, yeah. Yeah. So I had to call an audible really quick. Mm-hmm. And I, it was very easy to get the crowd <laughs> rallied. And I don't know if you heard this one chant I started, but I started chanting like an LA Hustlers chant. And during the chant, I switched it to say what I want you to say. Like I started like <laughs> kind of antagonizing them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was it was a lot of fun. But it was so weird to be the good guy and then immediately become the bad guy the next match. Yeah, because because the next match was the uh, that was the, uh, championship. the championship match. Yeah. Well, we talked about that. Um, it was great to have Matt Cross there. Yeah, he was uh, he was love, really cool. I would love for him he to was come super back. cool. I didn't get a chance to like meet him at all, which was. Also part, part of the pain. Part of the yeah. part of the reason that I was not having a fantastic night because I was really looking forward to like getting to do something with him or like talking to him uh, even a little bit. But uh, but the match itself was great. I really enjoyed it. Uh, the more I see of Jake Durden, the Jake's more so good. The, the more I I love him. That promo that he cut to was just like we cut. Mm-hmm. I was there. You were also there. Yes. <laughs> I thought my <laughs> performance was strong. <laughs> and then he starts talking, and it's like oh, well because he's the champion. Because he's so good. Because yeah. <laughs> he's also just so good. Yeah. Um. Uh, and then the there was intermission, and then we had the uh, the other tag match. Uh, the, yeah, the other tag match of Dalton and Billy versus uh, uh Justin and Hollis. Hollis. Uh, I told Dalton this. Like, I really enjoyed him in it. 
Uh, it was really nice to see him get like actual offense, like wrestling moves. Yeah, he was like a legit wrestler, in, as yeah. opposed to just like that plucky brawler right. style where he gets some lucky strikes in. Um, so I, it, I, I think it was his best wrestling performance in CCW today. Yeah, like from a wrestling mm-hmm. standpoint. Like I would, it's that in his Austin Lane match. Yeah, I think because the Austin, but the Austin Lane match told like a whole different story. Right. Um, that he performed his part very well. Dalton um, did apologize to me personally for not telling me about the dive. Oh, really? Because I didn't know it was coming. Mm-hmm. So Sarah and I are out there talking, mm-hmm. and I literally look up at the last second and see him coming over the rope, and I jumped out of the way. I had no idea it was coming. <laughs> that was pure reflex after the last time someone did that when Justin kicked me in the face <laughs> by accident. Um. So so I really enjoyed that. Billy is just stupid popular. Yeah. He has he has just that innate ability to rally a crowd behind him. It's that um, natural charisma. Your whole thing. Your whole thing with like trying to recruit him. Was really really good. Um, Justin and Hollis are both amazing. Uh, I love them like, as a team. Them working like them as a team working together too. Like I, I like them together too. Yeah, a lot. Like more than I thought I would. And it's like you take two people that I'm a huge fan of in general, and then you put them together, and somehow, and I like. I figured it would be like it would be good. I didn't think it would be that good. It was fun. Yeah. Uh, um, I fought then, real hard, by the way, to say shit during that promo mm-hmm. because I wanted to say, Billy, you are a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. And Billy was like, love it. Love mm-hmm. it. Do it. And I was like, I'm going to clear it with Jason first. Because it's a PG show. Because it's a PG show. And show. Jason shot it down. And he not only did Jason shoot it down, he shot it down in a no. <laughs> and I thought, you've got Espy over here. <laughs> Espy's been good. He has. But I, for his 30, I should get one. <laughs> no one should get any. <laughs> It should not be Sorry. premeditated. But That's gotta, what, that makes it first degree. But then you get that moment where you can literally look at Ken and go, "Sorry, Ken." <laughs> um, and then the Dalton is the motherfucker of the week moment happened because the announcement that now apparently you and I were the only ones left in the dark about this. Oh, and, and Allie. me and Allie. That uh, <laughs> so March is going to be the House One Hundred versus Dalton, mm-hmm. Farmer Billy Hills. And Glacier. And by the way, yeah. for everyone that is excited to see Glacier and CCW, you're welcome. Yeah. Because Asa started this joke a month ago. Month and a, it was before it was the bef- last show. It was before Matt Cross was announced. Yeah. Because Big Lee got real mad that we made a joke because they were announcing- a lot of jokes. Because <laughs> one day it was a one day thing. But damn, was it popular. Uh, but yeah, uh, of like, oh, we got a huge announcement for the fe- for the February show, which turned out to be. Uh, Matt Cross, right? But I was just like, "Oh, did you get Glacier?" Just I picked a random wrestler, and like cor- a, a random old, like a uh, uh, '90s wrestler. And of course, when I see Asa make a play, <laughs> I back my man, so I doubled down on the Glacier, uh, and then it set like wildfire. Yeah, uh, and then so yeah, we're 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 getting Glacier. We did it, CCW. Yeah. I'm just, like, there was one of those things. Like, there's pictures on Facebook, like Dalton's profile picture right now. I think is someone photographed him looking, looking at, at me at laughing yeah. because I'm actively like slapping Ken <laughs> on the arm because like you knew <laughs> Billy came up at during the next match and like whispered into my ears like I'm so sorry I had to hide that from you and I also didn't know what was coming I know mm-hmm. you you asked me after the show I was like did you know I didn't know <laughs> and so- I had to I had to not react the way I wanted to because I'm out there acting. <laughs> right. You need to be pissed. I did like pissed. coming. And then I think it was the moment was like, is that Sub-Zero? <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. Oh. So the next time we tell Dalton something and he spreads it, he has no excuse. Yeah. No excuse. He has no the ability to not excuse. open his mouth. Yeah. yeah. Like there's. But so, that's going to be so cool to see, like to work mm, with Glacier. Yeah. I hope no one tells him. The circumstances of I know, how he came there. Because I think it would honestly, I think he would think it was funny. He probably would. Because we just pulled, like I said, it's not like, I wasn't trying to insinuate that Glacier is not No, you just pulled a good. random. I just pulled literally a random just 90s wrestler. Imagine if it would have been somebody else. You right. said it was Steve Blackman. It's like, oh man, if I would have said Steve Blackman, you think we would have gotten Steve Blackman? <laughs> Horace Hogan. Uh, yeah. Um, but also just no, because Glacier got a raw deal. Could have been big. I love that look. There's just that whole. And he was so, so cool. good at it too. He was. Like, he's a legit martial artist too. Right. I watched his debut match. I think it was it was either his debut or his second match, and it was like his first uh, Nitro match mm-hmm. against uh, Big Bubba Rogers, who mm-hmm. was Big Boss Man. And like, holy shit! I forgot he kicks so well. Yeah. No. He's, so good. No, Glacier is legitimately awesome. Oh. Uh But yeah, so that was awesome. Um, we also had the 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 women's championship match. Uh, I got to see none of it, which makes me sad because I'm such a big fan of both Tootie Lynn Ramsey and of course mm-hmm. Cassandra Golden, who is her interview with Allie, mm-hmm. where she I think she said the F word, 
Which she is did. The first time I've heard her say, I didn't she think she had that up. in her vocabulary because she's so perfect. Mm-hmm. But she did, and she was just a lot of fun. Yeah. She's so funny. She like th- that's that's one of those people where it's like we've only gotten to meet her a couple times, but every time she's always super nice and super yeah. cool. Same thing with Tootie Lynn Ramsey. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. uh, from the first time that she came, like months ago. Uh, even before then, like so excitable. Seeing she is some, too. seeing some of her stuff from like Glory Pro and just her, she's going everywhere. Like she's super traveling. Tootie Lynn Ramsey is someone who is a, she has everything to be a big player you know, on the independent wrestling scene and wherever else she chooses to go. Uh, of course, I now know why she changed her name to Seishin. Why is that? Because there's literally a character named Tootie Lynn Ramsey from what it's show was it? Tootie Facts of Ramsey. Life? Yeah, okay. Tootie it's Ramsey. Not Lynn. Mm-hmm. Or at least they didn't. Put that well, on they, the yeah, toy. and she may have added the lens. Different dif- strokes. Uh, she may have added the lens to differentiate. Yeah, it. I don't right. know, but so yeah, but uh, I like I dig the station character. It's one of those things I wish we could get a little bit more detail on. Like that's, but I think that you know if we could do something, maybe we could do a promo or something. To help right, doing it. Yeah. like or even yeah. having like an inter- like if we could interview Tootie where she and then you have station come in type deal, kind of like what we've done with like <laughs> Marni Gras and Megan and stuff. Um, she was really good at that, which I also I am super excited for the Mardi Gras 2D match yeah. in March. Um, I really enjoyed the match, though. Uh, I, I liked, the, the, the again, the story that they told of Cassandra Golden getting frustrated that she couldn't put her away. And, you know, she should... She's she's already won two other championships. She's, like, she does... Why isn't it just happening? Yes. Right. Like, I, I, I dug that. I, I like them a lot. And then the Riot match um, was a blast. It was very hard to call uh, because there was so much happening at all times. Try like, filming it. Oh yeah, no. Like I, I that is I do not envy like Try you or Mandy. Try figuring out where to point the camera. Like where people are supposed to be. And, yeah. Yeah. So we we just we just Ken and I and, and, and Shannon was up there too. Like we tried to just kind of call it as everything was happening, but there was so much happening that Including wrestlers we didn't that weren't on our list. Yeah. Because Asa had a list of all the wrestlers that were entering and then people would come out at the wrong spot or like not on the list at all. Yep. And the, Asa would look I at me felt, and I'd look at him. <laughs> I felt so bad because when Briar came out uh Briar Mercury for the for lethal injection. Yeah. I totally blanked. I was like, oh I know. Because well, either of their names were on the list. Yeah, because their names weren't on the list at all. And I could but I knew we had seen them before and I knew they were in lethal injection. And yeah. I knew and I, but I couldn't remember which one was Briar and which one was Brad because my brain totally shut off on me. And, and those I was were like, also very similar names. And I was and also scruffy ca- white guys, yeah. beards. <laughs> and I was also counting on the fact that the list was the list. Yeah. Because like so that's what I was prepared to say. I think it was Lamont yeah. was supposed to come out and then it was it was not Lamont and so that threw me and then I was like, wait, holy crap. So that was also part of the reason because I was like, Man, I totally missed it. Oh, that. then Reno Diamond came out again. Yeah. Which was like Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> it was Yeah. There was just for Lamont to grab him and like take him backstage. Mm-hmm. Very and I was like, confused. That's random. I don't know what's happening. So yeah. so we the commentary on that match is gonna be Once Austin got in the ring, we were just like, Oh, thank God. Yeah. It's over. And now we don't have now it's yeah. just these are the people who are in the match. Mm-hmm. Um I also want to give a special shout out to the Jackson Marnie interaction. I loved how she didn't fuck around with the actual match. Yeah. She was strictly there to screw over Jackson. And it was good. Like, yes. It was really cool to see yeah. her in there, and it goes back to that old anyone can win the CCW title. Even though there's a women's title, yeah. you, Marnie could still go for the CCW for, title. Yep. Sarah could go for the CCW title. Cassandra some- Golden can and should <laughs> go for the CCW and that, title. And that's something that like I think like Megan and Sarah both have said in interviews. Of It's just like, no, I mean, yeah, there's the women's championship, but that yeah. doesn't exclude us from the, main, the, like, the Quote, CCW unquote, championship. Main. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Jackson Crowley won. Jackson Crowley won. That was a great moment. Austin came back. It was huge for Austin. Austin's got an open challenge for the next show. I'm very curious to see where that goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jackson's going to fight uh, Espy, which is going to be a sick match. Um, Again, just any combination of any of that. Right. Gimme, gimme. Joey O'Reilly versus Dexter. Uh, Dexter. I'm really excited for that one. We'll preview that show, obviously, closer to when it comes out. But yep. uh, One Night Riot 2 was a lot of fun. And we'll have that up on YouTube uh, next couple weeks. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And that's going to do it here for us here on Pro Wrestling Unscripted. Uh, we're going to be back tomorrow with Podzilla After Dark. And we are going to be talking about probably Pokemon Shield and uh, uh, Sword. Skates. Yep. Because Lindsay will be on and she did not get to, she wasn't on last week. Mm-hmm. So I know she's going to have a lot to say about it. Allie will not be on tomorrow, nope. which makes me very sad because she's been on for the past couple of weeks. So right now we don't have a fourth. It'll just be me, Jesse, and Lindsay. And that could be rough. There is a very good chance that by tomorrow night, my voice will be gone. Mm-hmm. So this could be an interesting show. <laughs> uh, until then, we're going to we're gonna get out of here, go grab some Taco Bell, more than likely. Probably. Probably, even though we got that foreman at home. We got, I guess we could put the tacos on the foreman. Warming up. 
warm it up. Get the Did we have out. the thing that we were supposed to say for Derek? Oh, or yeah. are we are we postponing that until Dalton's here so he can be the one to say it? It was specifically for Dalton. Mm-hmm. So I want to say So we'll so we'll we'll postpone that. So, so apologies to Derek. <laughs> yeah, because you want to hear it from Dalton. <laughs> right. Dalton is the one you want to hear. I yeah. could fake a Dalton voice, but I, it won't be as good. It won't be as good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're gonna get out of here. Thank you guys for listening. Asa, hit us with those links. Uh Facebook.com slash Podzilla nineteen eighty five. Give us a link. Um we posted something about the three starters. Uh, we're definitely going to talk about it. I know you guys are going to talk about it a lot tomorrow, but we're also going to cover it on Nerd Up. Um, but, you know, what do you think of the starters? Who are you going to pick? Um, what do you think of Sword and Shield in general? Because I have thoughts. Uh, you do. It's mostly of the direct. You do. Um, so go there. Give us a like. Share us with your friends if, if uh, you dig what we do. Um, Podzilla1985.com. You can uh, go back, listen to any of the older episodes. We had a really fun uh, Mr. 100 Five Star Man that we did last night with... Calvin, yeah, special that was, guest. That was very interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, I enjoyed doing that one a lot. Uh, I think that one was a lot of fun. So go check that out if you uh, if if this is the only show that you listen to. Uh, I encourage you to go check out you know some of the other stuff that we do. Uh, also, patreoncom slash podzilla 1985 for just a dollar you get all of the pre shows, uh, which are some of the most fun that I think we put out because it's just it's more relaxed and it's more at ease. There's no real topic. We're it's just, just kinda, us talking. Yeah, to we you. we just kind of bullshit and inter- and you know talk directly to the Patreon subscribers. Um, and it's only a dollar to get the pre show stuff. Uh, at the ten dollar level, you can uh, like Derek has we you can give, give us you know a little two sentence blurb. Um, that you that you want us to say and plug on the show, um, we'll do that. Like Austin Lane, did, or I'm sorry, Johnny Underwood did to to promote Austin Lane One, which is Austin Lane's Twitter handle. So go uh, make sure you give the best of the best a follow there, as well as you know Podzilla1985.com or Twitter.com/slash/Podzilla1985. We're on Twitter. We're doing stuff. I'm trying to do stuff. I got bad about it last week because I forgot. Uh, but we're gonna. I, do... I saw stuff this week and yeah. very happy with it. I'm trying. I'm trying. Uh, and then Patreon Podzilla. That's it. That's it. So yeah. Taco Bell. I like Taco Bell. All right. You guys have a good one. We'll see you later.